Okay, so good morning. So let's start with um, a few news uh, slash reminders. Um, so next week, next Tuesday, we don't have class because clearly it's holiday. And so that's why we, we did an extra class last week just to compensate this. But next Thursday, you will have lab. So you will have all the labs as usual, just no class next Tuesday. And we have enough material between last week and this week to cover two labs. Uh, there are also two readings available for you to read, in theory. Um, both are on things that we already, you already used uh, for, for a while. So the first reading is about this keyword in uh, JavaScript, and it's due by next Monday. Again, it's something that you use, this dot uh, changes or this dot something else. There it explains why it's working that way. So it's more theoretical background. And the other one is about modules, import, export, require, all the things again that you we already use. And there there is the, let's say, theoretical uh, settings behind modules. Um, so this is due by the 1st of May, but they are both available online right now. So you can start reading from now until uh, the 1st of May. And it's again, more on things that you already use just to understand why it works in that way. So for instance, why you cannot use the, this dot lastd when you use a database query with an array of, an array of function. And so there it's explained why it's not working with an array function, but it's working with a normal function, for instance. Um, so the next class here will be the 2nd of May. And since there is some confusion about exam date, um, I just wanted to put it here, the tentative exam date that we have uh, also. So the first uh, seat for this exam will be the 26th of June and following days. And the second one will be the 10th of July and following days. Following days meaning that since it's an oral, it's individual oral discussion, we will, according to, to the number of people will enroll in an exam, we will not be able to do everybody probably in the single day, but we will need to, to use more day after that single day. But it depends how many of you enroll to the single exam. And I typically, uh, allow you to select which slot in which day you want to uh, do the oral presentation because you can have other exams or other things to, to do. Hmm? But we will start for sure the 26th for the first seat and the 10th of July of the second seat and then we will continue for the following days. Hmm? And for both dates, the text of the requirements will be available 20 days before that, those dates. So the 6th of June for the first seat and the 20, more or less, of, Ju of June for the second seat. Okay? And so this is just news slash reminder. You also will see probably, uh, as your colleague, another exam date on the 20th of July that is wrong, apparently. I mean, to, to our knowledge, is wrong. Good. Any doubt on this? Great, so let me close this. And we don't care about this in this moment. So what we are going to do in these three hours is basically coding together, mostly. Um, because we want to explore more about the forms, about the state, etc. So when to use a state, when don't use a state, and to do what. So we will continue the exercise we started last week. Um, that is the one available on GitHub, but it's actually the same we, we did on Thursday. And the idea is to do three main things. The first one is to complete the form for adding a new answer to the table of the answer. And completing means also deciding how to manipulate the state. Uh, the second one is two, let's say, small example use case for the state. 
One is we want to add a button at the end of the table and when we press the button the form appear and when we submit the form or cancel the form the form disappear and the button appear so it's a button that just trigger in the page the appearance of the form uh, and this this one make the entire form appear and disappear to a submittable button at the end of the table and do we need a new state to do that or not and why and the other one is a little bit more tricky and it could be done in different way uh, but since it's something quite common to have a list of items, a table, a list, whatever, that needs to be sorted in some way, so not filtered, but just sorted alphabetically, numerically, in ascending or descending order, whatever, uh, we are also doing that small exercise, again, for the implication on the state hmm, that this can have. So in our case, we want to click on just one column, that is the score column, and we want to order the content of the table in ascending order if click the first time or descending order if click the second time. And then if you look at the third time, it will be again ascending order and then ascending order. So every time you click, you will go ascending or descending order according to uh, the number of clicks that you, you have done. Hmm? And also in this case, do you need a new state? Which one? Are we going to manipulate the states that contain all the answers or not and how, etc. So, uh, use cases about state. And finally, in the second hour, uh, we will uh, try to reuse the same form that we have for adding a new answer to edit the answers that we have in the table. Hmm? So by clicking a edit button somewhere, somewhere, we will make the form appear the same form. We will reuse the same component. We will not create another form. We will reuse the same component, the same form, and we will populate that form with the information from the table, and we will edit it and replace it in the table and in the state. Hmm? So uh, the first and the, and the last one are more, um, let's say, traditional, it's adding something, editing something. We, didn't, we haven't done the delete something, but it's it should be trivial, just deleting a, a, an item in the array. And the, the one in the middle is more about reflecting on the state uh, and using the elements we have in the table to, to do that and using the form to do that. Okay, so these three things, but let's start with add an answer first. Mm -hmm. And we'll try to do this together. So I'm not going to speak three hours, not at all. Okay, so. This is the same exercise we have from last time. Uh, do you see, everybody see over there, especially big enough? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so let's run this. So let's install everything around this just to see if it's still everything working. Do you know why we write npm run dev? Where is written? What happens? Um, why I cannot write run something else? Because of free version generated. More or less. So yes, in theory you have a development release, um, production release, etc., etc. But why I, we, I write run and not something else? not start well because it's not working but where is written that i have to to write dev run dev it's written somewhere else or is, is it's written somewhere or it's just yes. magic it's written somewhere yes in the package json exactly so all here under scripts these three scripts are run with npm run whatever is written here so when we write npm run dev is like executing this command that is byte and if we run npm run build that we don't need to because is we are not using byte is like writing npm is like writing executing byte build 
Mm? So this is a shortcut for the scripts, and the scripts can be long uh, as you want. So these are just shortcuts. So when we write npm run dev, we are calling this specific script. Mm? So writing that or writing byte is produces the same results because actually one is a shortcut for the other. Okay, just and this apply for many. So we, we can have a script called start that will do the same thing as npm run dev if we want. Um, but in case uh, run dev and localhost. Okay, and so here it's what we did last time. Um, so we have the table. We can click on this button to increase the score. And if we click more, we increase more. And we have this form that has some validation. We add this validation, like you have to add the text. And I think a minimum length of the text. And then we have, uh, we have to insert an author. And then we, we, we don't have a mandatory dates, but uh, we, we need to insert a date. But it's not mandatory, because we said uh, we can assume that it is today hmm, date. And then we have a cancel button that does nothing, and a not button that in this moment does nothing. Mm, tries to submit the form, but the form is empty, is not validating, so it's not working. And if we write something and we press add, we just go in the normal form submission that is reloading the page and emptying the form, but we and we see that because there is a question mark here in the URL, but there is no changes in the table. Hmm? So this is the where we are, we were uh, last week hmm? on Thursday. And clearly all of this is already on GitHub. So what we want to, to do now is to finish this form, to make it work. Hmm? So when we write something here and press add, we want to add one line in the table. So, what we need to do, so first of all, we need to go in the form. Also, let me rename this to be more compliant with the other. So, let me call it answer form. And this will break everything, but let me just check this, fix this. Answer form answer form and answer form and answer form and answer form and it should be ready okay uh, so just the name change for because everything is called answer something so um, okay so the answer form we started last time to say, okay, we will need an handle submit that will handle the submit the form because we want to prevent the default, the default behavior and actually uh, submitting the form in JavaScript in React. So the first things that we need to, uh, to say is that this form here is using this method for submitting hmm? because in this moment we have a, a function that is handle submit that does nothing but Whatever this function does is not linked, is not called by any component, by any other piece of code. It's just there. Hmm? So how do we, you remember, how do we um, say that this form needs to use this function to submit? Which event we need to intercept? Not click. Almost click, but not click. Click is a general event, it's for everything that can be clickable. This is a form, and a form, it's submitted. So the events will be called on submit. Like click is on click. And this event is an event for the form tag. It's not an event on the button. It's an event on the form tag. So here in form, we say on submit. And end of submit. So we created this link. Now, what do we need to do in the end of submit? We need to create a new answer. So let me write this in code in a, with a comment. 
create a new answer. But before that, we need to do one thing before everything, or at least one thing that we need to remember to do always in this case, when we submit a form in React. What did happen when I press the button here? The page is reloaded, because this is the default behavior. So what we want to do first? Save the date, no? So when I click the button, the page refresh, because that was the default behavior. So we want the default behavior? No. So what is the first thing I need to do? Is to prevent the default behavior. So we need to, to pass to this uh, an event that is always available. We just need to, to consider the event and write event.prevent um, default. So that is preventing the default behavior and then we need to, to decide which is the, our behavior, the non-default behavior. That will be create a new answer, clearly. So we need to create a new answer, and then what we need to do after creating a new answer? Add the answer to the list, the array of answer. Add the answer that is in the state, right? To the uh, answers state. Okay. Good. So. Let's create a new answer. Const answer. New answer. Right? So which are, and we need to import answer. The model, the structure. Uh, from QA models. So which are the parameter answers? There will be long three hour in this way. Which will be the parameter answer? ID. So let's write this in just the parameter and then we will understand what to put here. The ID, the text, the name, oh, it's written, the date and the score. Well, the score is default to zero, so it's, it's fine not to add it because by default the score will be zero. So in, at least in, in this one, you know, the score, if it's not indicated, it will be zero. So it's fine, we can omit it. And do we have all this information? No. no. Which information are we missing? The ID. the ID. Okay. How do we get the ID? We can take it from the previous answer. We can take it previous answer wow. and add one because it's a numerical ID. That's correct. How? Because <laughs> clearly it's it's a last ID plus one. That's good. But how we get it? Where is? So here, do we have here the last ID in this component? No. Where is the last ID? Which is the components that has the parent of these, let's say, that has all the answers so that we can get the last ID? Surely it's an answer component and it is answer table because answer table is where we have all the answers. And after that, we have a single answer, so we lose the, the idea of the ID. Um, so here, we need to pass uh, hmm, through the chain, again, uh, the um, last ID. Hmm? So, uh, actually, uh, here, we need to, hmm, because answer table clearly has the properties, but we need to pass it to answer form, and, and this is the, the structure we have, we need. Mm -hmm. So, one step either. It's answer table that has, but answers is where we have the answer form. So, it's where we, we need to pass. So, we need to pass a last D 
to fro um, from answers that is it is in case is a props dot answers last d how do we get last d So this is an array, uh, which in, in, where in the items it has a length of five, four, and each item is an, has an ID. So can we use the length of the array to calculate the ID? Can we use the length of the array to calculate the ID? No. Why yes? Who said that the ID are um, all the numbers are represented in the array and in the right in correct order? I can have uh, in the array, so she said no, and it's correct, because the array can have uh, an element that is the one, an element that is the three, and an element that is the four, and an element that is the seven, because there was something deleted in the meantime. And the ID don't change if you delete something. You keep the original IDs. So you cannot say four, because actually the last ID is seven. So you want to preserve that, or, or that are not in order, then don't start from one. So you, you cannot rely on the length. It will be easier, but you cannot. We need to get the last ID. Hmm? And we can assume that is the last one, the last inserted in order, because that we can do an assumption for now. So all of this for the D is actually uh, fake in this moment, because in the moment in which we will add uh, a database, it will be the database that will give us an ID, and we don't need to, to care too much about ID. But in this moment, we need an ID because it's also the key in the table, so we need to insert something. So we can assume that at least the ID are in order. So the last item is actually the last ID, whatever it is. It could be seven, eight, 100, but this is the last time. That's one assumption we can do now. We can sort and filter to get the last one. That's the idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, also. Yeah. Sort it and then get the last one. Yeah, we can do that. Um, so, but we, if we rely on the assumption that the last ID, this is an assumption that we are making eh, here. So the assumption that we are making here, and let me write it, because it's just an assumption that is not true. Assumption, the last ID will be in the last item in the array. That's an assumption that we are making here that is not generally correct. So if we make this assumption, we can use the splice to um, get the last um, slice, to get the last it the last item and then to get it ready hmm? to get the last item and to get ready so if you remember slice cut the the array of any position from any position and so by default if you indicate a number this is cut the last one minus one counting from the end of the array and that will produce an array of length one with just one item. And then we get the only item we have because it's by default one item. It's the last one and then we can get the ID. Hmm? A more precise and general way to do that is, uh, for instance, what your colleague was suggesting. So we can uh, iterate, we can order by ID and then get the last ID, the maximum number that we have. That's a more general without assumption, because in that case, we are sure that is the maximum number. Hmm? Um, and we can do it with sort, for instance. But we don't want to sort the answer, so it's, it's tricky. So let's rely on this assumption and use this. So we have this last D as a props. And so here, we can say that this is props.lastid 
plus one. And we need to add a props here. Okay, so we now have a reasonable ID uh, with that assumption and the full answer. Now we need to, answer, to add the answer to the state. Well, actually, what we should do, but we are not going to do it now, is extra validation. So the date is not mandatory. We can validate that the date is present and is correct and is not empty. So if date is here or before creating the answer, so add some validation if needed for the form. We already have some validation in the page, in the components like the required, the length, etc. But we can add other specific validation if we need, like the date cannot be 10 years ago, for instance. So we can add other validation that we need in this point or a few line after. Um, but if there are basically if something happens, then do other. So nothing really complicated, just um, things that if you want, you can, you can add. Now, add the answer to the answer state. How? What is, well, first, what is the answer state? What is, in which component is the state of all the answers? In up, so it's not here, hmm? it's an up. So we need to have, so, and where we are creating a function to manipulate that state? Here or in up? In up. Hmm? Like we did for the vote. So we go in up, and like we did for the vote up, hmm, we can have another function that we can call add answer. That will receive an answer, clearly, because it needs to add the answer. And it adds the answer to the state. How do we manipulate the state? With set answers. Do we need to use the, the, uh, the object methods for updating the state or the uh, functional method to update the state? So we can write something here directly or we need to write another function to, uh, with the old answers here. To manipulate which one this or the other one why so this one not the other one because we are adding to the old state so we need the old state right so it, the, the new um, the variation depend on the previous version of the state because we are adding to the previous version of the state so we need the, this one because we have access to old state and how do we add something? So remember that set answers needs a new, an entire new array, the entire array. You cannot just say, oh, this is one more thing for you. So how do we add one thing to the array? Not with push because we need a new array in the end while push is just adding to the existing array, we need to provide a new array. Always, set answer will need a new array. In this case, because in this case we have array, so a new object that in this case is a new array. We do the same thing we did with the whole, no? Uh, we, no, because, well, no, because this is, way more complex because this is for updating an element that is already present. We don't need to update anything. We need to preserve whatever it is and just add one thing on the bottom, for instance. So this is way more complicated for what we, we need. Can we use this for We can. 
use the spread operator and say all dancers answer. This will create a copy of all dancer and add answer after and return a new array because it's it's a copy of, of answer of old answer. So we spread old answer in a new array, adding as the n uh, parameter uh, an element the answer. Okay, and just to um, these the updates the delete I told you last time, but just to to keep this in mind are in the slides. Mm? So if you don't remember how to add item in an array value state, here there is how to do that. Mm? So with concat or with with this, and if you want to insert at the beginning, you have the new item at the beginning. If you want to insert at the end, you can have the new item at the end. We are just inserted in the end. And same things for updating. We already did that. And also updating an array, normal array or an array object. And also for removing stuff. Mm -hmm. So these are the templates you can use for this kind of operation. Add, update, um, remove when you have an array. When you have an object, it's easier because you always get the new. So if you have a number, you always get a new number. So you need, don't need to, to, to iterate on the array, to manipulate the array because you don't have an array. But all of this is, is always in the slides of last time. So if you, with options, so if you, if you need, you can have a look at, always at this as a reference. Okay, so now we have this method here, we need to bring it to the form because it's there that it needs to be called. So how do we bring this to the form? Yes, we can pass it to answer form as a parameter, but here we don't have an answer form, so we need to go through all the chain hmm, as, a, as a props. Hmm. So here we will have add answer, or whatever you want to, to call it actually, uh, it's fine, and an answer. And then in answers, we will need to pass it to props.addAnswer. To pass it down, and now in the answer form, we can write props.addAnswer. Um, we call it answer. Hmm? Now, if we did everything right, it should also work. That okay. So we we created that things he, there in app. Everything that needs to update the states and need to be where we are creating the state. So in in the app, and we pass through where in the place we we need it. Hmm? So. We can try to see if we make no mistakes or we forgot any updates or import. So let me open the console just to be sure. So let's try to add something, whatever it is, and let's pick for this moment. Let's pick a date, a valid day. So let's try with the valid case and you see, we had a new element with the correct date, that's the, the one of today, and with zero score. And if we press, press here, since it's just one item in the array, like everybody else, we can increase the score, like anybody else, hmm? because we have an ID that is the key that is unique in this table. Hmm? And we have no, no errors. Etc. Hmm? Clearly, if we refresh all of this, what happens if we refresh the page? Well, not everything, but yeah, the, the things that we just added, we lose the things that just added because it's, it's just stored in the state, but when we recreate the application, we will rebuild everything from scratch, hmm? from the fake answer 
uh, structure that we had. Okay, and, and this is the add. So every time you need to add something, this is more or less the same process and things that you have to, to consider. So you can, again, all, use all of this as a template for, for doing adding, etc. Hmm? And this was the first exercise. Any, the first part of the exercise. Any questions? Doubts? Hmm? Because now things will be more complicated. Yeah. Which array? Oh, the, the set, uh, but we need two. I mean, I, I in theory can agree with you that copying every time is an array that is big as, as you want could be heavy, but the set state needs an entire, the entire things you have in the array, in the state. So if you choose to put an array in the state, you have to, to copy the array. That is. Don't choose to have the array in the state if you don't want to. I mean, no, it's not always possible, but it's something to consider for sure. Hmm? So that's also why last time I told you that. So in this case, it's reasonable to have the array in the state. But uh, in, in some cases, you should try to keep the array as sm the state as small as possible, also to, to avoid this having a one million item array in the state and they have to copy every time everything from ch for changing a, a score or for adding something. But again, the state was the entire object like, back. So if you have one million ab array, you have to, to put it back one million and one array as a copy. That's how React works. Okay, so now what we want to do here is to add a button here in the table, after the table, and when we press the button, we show the form, and when we press cancel or we submit the form, we hide the form and we put it back, the button. Hmm? So we have either the button, occupy the space, or the form, occupy the space. And when we click on the button, we show the, the form, and when we complete our operation in the form, we show the button. Okay, that is, you, if you imagine a, a normal application, you maybe don't have always the form visible. You have to click something, show the form, and then hide the form when you've done. And if you want to do another operation like that, you can reshow the form, add the item, and hide this. And this also will allow us to, to experiment a little bit with some aspects of the, of the state again. So how, how do we add a button here? Yeah. On the form. Okay, while I keep this here visible, uh, where do we put the button? If we want a button to hide and show the form, where do, and we need the button uh, under the table, where do we put the button? Not here, clearly, because this is the answer form, but... In answers. Can I change this? Have you have seen? Are you okay with that? Okay. In answers. So, <clears throat> in answers. Right. So let's add the button here. And the button can be variant success. Just and uh, it will be called add. A button. Hmm? So if we go here, we have a button now. But now I need to. We need to do this operation. When I press the button, so at the beginning, we have the table and the button, no form. So up to the button, but without the form. When I press the button, the form appears and the button disappears. And when I submit or cancel the form, 
the form disappears and the button appears. So we need to have the button or the form visible. We cannot have both. We should use a state that is useful for what? Do you agree? So he said that we need a state uh, to, um, to keep track of the fact that the form is shown or not, basically, to toggle the things. Hmm? Any disagreement on this? So let's create this form, const this, uh, this state. Uh, let's call it show form and set show form. Use state. And what's the default value? False. Because we want the button but not the form. So by default, the, sh the show form is false because we don't want to show the form. And how do, you use, do we use this? Because we have a state that say that the form is shown or not, but now we need to use it to show the button or the form. So what we need to, to, to say logically, since we have the state, if the state is the show form is true, display the form, else display the button. Okay. So let's say this here. Show form. With a ternary operator. Show form. If show form is true, we need the form. So let's pick this and put it here. <coughs> Else, show the button. This will destroy and recreate the, the elements in the page every time. And so when we press the button, the button will be destroyed and the form will create it. And when we submit the form or cancel the form, the form will be destroyed and the button will be created. Meaning that it will be created from scratch. So every property that are passed in the form will be reused in the creation time. It's like refreshing the page. Hmm? So it will be creating from scratch. Hmm? This is a, a way in React, it's quite a common way in React to create and recreate objects, to create and destroy objects when conditionally, when you need. So in this case, we use this show form state to keep track of the state of the visibility state of the form and decide whether we want to show the form or the button. And again, this will be created and destroyed every time. Hmm? So it will be rebuilt from scratch. So let's see if it's, well, it's clearly not working yet. Why? We are not updating the state in any case. Hmm? So in this moment, what we should see, if, if, if I go there and pre add the refresh, what I see? Only the button. Only the button. So, and if I click the button, nothing happens. So where I need to put the function to show the form, which is the event that triggers the form showing. Don't click on, on the button. So on click. set show form true. Hmm? 
We can add it directly to the state, passing the object because we don't really care about the previous state, the previous value in the state. Because if we have the button, it's, it should be false. So we can just replace true. But even if it was true and we add true again, nothing happens because it's the same value. Hmm? So here, if I press add, the form must appear. Now we need to do the reverse. How can we hide the form when I press cancel, for instance? If I press cancel, I want to go back to the button. I need to do the same thing on cancel, right? So I need to pass the show form property to the form. or at least some function, I can call it cancel. And I can say that cancel is actually, is directly what we need. So set to show form false. And in the answer form, I can say, I can call props.cancel linked to the button, to the cancel button, so that it will close the, um, the form. So we don't need to pass the state, we just need, we pass the function, that is the cancel function, that we are going to use directly. So in the answer form, we add a cancel button here, and so here we can say on click, uh, props.cancel. And this cancel is the function that we defined before. So here we just have one click, on click, and here we define that the on click, the cancel is actually set uh, show form. So we don't pass the state in this case, but we manipulate the state directly here, and we pass a function to, to manipulate the state accordingly. Okay, so let's try if this is working. Oh, no, let's add it to the add answer. Because also when we press add, we want to hide the form, right? So, where? We can do it in the add no submit, but that will need that we need to pass the set show form that we, in this moment, we don't have because we pass cancel. So if we don't want to pass the set, so and the submit could be one position, clearly. Um, where, where, else, where else we can put it, the set show form false, if not in the under submit? Can we put it here, here in this page, in this component? She said yes, because it's actually yes. So we can do something similar to what we did for cancel, but not identical, just similar. So add answer uh, is a, a props that we're passing, and here we have a function. But it's written nowhere that we must have one function. We can have also 10 functions here, because this is JavaScript code. So we can, for instance, do something like Props add answer. And set the show form false. And we need this. And we need clearly an answer here, because otherwise it's not working. Okay, so if I press add, 
it appears, if I press cancel, it appears, if I press add and write something, and press add, it disappears. And clearly, since we didn't validate the date and we didn't select a date, we just have invalid date in the table because DJS get a random object and try to manipulate to create a date, a date out, out of there and say, this is not a date, so invalid date. Hmm? But everything is working. Hmm? And, and we can continue. Hmm? So it's always working this way. And if we refresh again, we go back to the original version. So you see that now things hmm, I have a lot of pieces here and there. Hmm. And we, we are going to add more. So that's why it's important that you are you don't have any specific question and you are okay with that. So any questions up to here? because we are adding uh, more pieces to this. So this would be bigger in the lines. When we are passing the uh, set show form tools for the council uh, parameter mm -hmm. props, uh, are we also calling um, the function in line or we are just passing the This is not calling the function in line because this is a function. Mm. So this is uh, the same things we did last time for vote up, which I don't remember what it is, or whatever it was. Um, mm. So without this, we would have executed set of form false in that moment when that was evaluated but since we have a function that is postponed when the actual cancel is called with the parentheses and always when you have something like that is like also here is postponed to the moment in which the function the events in this case is called and if you don't have parameter you can also write like this so without their function but also without the parentheses they are the same so you pass just the reference down let's continue the way and, and you will uh, love to do something like this in the labs, not identically, but also there at a certain point we will have a, a form to add a new movie, uh, but so something similar to that. Not identically, it will not be in the page like in this case, but something similar. So let's, let's do the other slightly more complex thing, for which I need another piece of paper. Um, so now before doing the editing we want to have a button here close to score and when i press this button here this table will be ordered so if i press the table i will see minus 10 sorry if i press the button here i will see minus 10 0 5 10 if I press it again, I will see 10, 5, 0, minus 10. So this will be ordered according to the score. And if I press again, ordering again. Okay? So, um, how are we... Well, we, we can add easily a button here. It's not a problem to do that but how this is going to work. I have a button here. Let's say that I want to order from minus 10, all this answer from minus 10 to 10. Just one side, one flow. I press the button, I want to order the content of the table. We know how to add a button. So let's imagine that we have a button already. I press the button and what should happen?
which answer? The content of the table is the answer array, clearly. The state. That could clearly be one possibility. But it makes sense to update the entire state of the application for a pure temporary visualization purpose. It, it, it's, it's going to work. Yeah, I mean, if we do that way, it's going to work. Because clearly, we update the state uh, of the table and the table render itself. But we need to order this state that is an app and it potentially can be available to every other components just because in this table we need a different ordering. That doesn't make really a lot of sense. We clearly need to, uh, to order these things because they are here. So in some way we need to order the array. That's not important. That's something that we need to do. But do we need to do it in the app state or we need to do it differently? So apparently differently makes sense because we, we don't want to update the entire state of the entire application for just one purpose. That is just visualization purpose. And, and imagine if we have one button for each column, we're going to reorder the state multiple times just for visualizing it in this table, but it's not affecting the original state. It's not affecting the, the normal behavior of the application. So if we don't want, and we shouldn't, use the app state, what can we use? What can we do? Do we have this content somewhere else in the code? We have in the state, but then we have the content in the table, in the table component. Yes or no? Yes, and where? Where we have the table, the, com the answers? We have in the states and, and where else? No, before inform answer. We have it from the state in a props. So we have in the table, if we want, the, we pass it here. So here we have the answers and we render the table according to the answers. So it's here that we need to do something so that this answer row will be generated in a different order, basically. So we don't want to update the state, we don't want to mess with up, but we need to do something here with props. Can we change a props? No. So we need to do something here, but we cannot change the props because the props is read-only and we don't want to manipulate the state. Hmm? We can clone the props. We can copy the props and put it where? The answer cannot be in a state. Because then we need to manipulate the answer. So we need to create a, a write copy, <laughs> a writable copy of the, of the props. So we cannot use a state. We don't want to use a state. We cannot use the props to make a copy. So we cannot write props.something equal props.answers because it's not working. It's read-only. To copy, we can use the spread uh, operator and where we store that copy? That's the question. We cannot copy here. I mean, it doesn't change if we copy here. Because we also need these to be sorted by score when I press the button, not always. So it's not enough to say that. And I cannot say dot sort here because I don't know yet in this moment which sort order I want to, to do. So 
and at the beginning there is no sorting when I open the so so we need to copy this clearly that's that's the key point but where do we store the copy in this function It's the simplest answer you can imagine, probably. But probably it's too simple, so... Where do you store something in JavaScript or in any programming language? In a variable. And who said that you cannot use variables? Nobody. So, we can create a variable. Sorted answer. that will be props.answers that will be the copy that we have hmm? so we are not creating a state we are just creating a temporary variable that lives within the function hmm? so every time the component is created or destroyed these will be created from scratch clearly hmm? but we define functions vote up, add, etc. and we define functions here so there is no reason why you cannot define also variable within the function this is important, within the function outside the function will break the purity of the function but within the function so like, like here like some code here will break the purity of the function because we change maybe something that we will need to pass to the function but here you are in a function. So you can do whatever a function does. So you can create variables, you can do if, you can do things. Hmm? So we need to copy this. And now that we have a copy of this, we can also, since this is what renders the table, instead of props.answers, here we are going to use sorted answer, that is the variable. So this is an example of a case in which we don't want to change the state. We want something that is derived by the state, because this is derived by the state, clearly. It's derived by the state. If the state change, this is the change needs to be reflected here. If we add an answer, we want to sort also that answer that we add. So it's derived from the state, but it's not the state of the entire application. Hmm? So we can have sorted answer here. And we need here a button, we said, um, and we can use an icon that I don't remember. Uh, it should be sort. This one. Sort numeric up, down, down first. So we can get this. And um, this could be variant link. So that is not a full button. And what we need to do when we press this button? So we have now a button here. When we press this button, what we should do? Sort. Yes. Don't be shy. We need to sort. So how do we sort things? So what do we need to write here on the button first? Unclick. And uh, on click we can call a function. That is the function that will sort everything. And we can call it uh, sort by score. 
and we can define here the function const sort by score and we can sort let's say for the moment in one order from from the minus 10 to 10 then we can end all the the other cases but let's start with that so uh, sorted answer that's actually sorted answers <coughs> dot sort do you remember sort how it works a vague idea of how sort works it gets two parameters in the callback a and b that are pairs of elements and it should return minus one if a is smaller than b and one vice versa or zero if they are equal so since these are numbers we can use a dot score minus b dot score and that will or sorry a value bigger than my smaller than minus one or bigger than one in cases or zero if they are the same and so this will give us the result okay can we try so we click here and we sort the the answers and here we have the answers that in that case should be sorted so and sort change the array in place so any doubts or questions so i click here and I'm clicking trust me but it doesn't see anything working anything happening and if I respect and see the components maybe we can see if the state if this um, uh, where it was in the um, answer table I don't know if we if we have that here in this No. No, we don't have it here in the component. Oh, but we have an error. So let me see what is the error first. Oh, well, this is just a warning. So it's not its class name because I copy and paste. But in any case, let's refresh this. And even without the warning, it's not working. Why? It's not. It's correct. It's not working. It's, it's fine. It's not working. We need to to render right? exactly. We need to change the view. Hmm? And how do we render things? How do we change the view of a component? In React, changing its state, <laughs> and here we are back <laughs> to the state. Yes, we cannot change the content of the table without changing the state of the table. So, what do we need? A state. Which state? Not the states that contain the answer, but which state do we need? Yeah, whatever state, actually whatever state, the point of things that is the state in the table. In this case, we, I told you that we want an ascending order, a descending order, so that could be our state. The order of the sorting, it could be ascending or descending. Mm -hmm. So we can 
create a state. We can here create a state that we can call um, Okay. That we can call uh, mm, sorted score. So, yeah, sorted score or sort value. It's actually more the sort value. I mean, it's the value in which it's order, sort order, ascending the cylinder. So we can call it sort order and set the sort order. Use state. Uh, what's the default order? Whatever, none. That's one case that we want, don't want to handle, the none case. So this sort order will, at the beginning, have value none, and then ascending or descending. That's the, the two things that we, we want to do. So. What we need to do now. So here we cannot do this. So let's comment for a moment. Here, since this is the click on the button, what we need to do when we click the button? Change the state. So set sort order. Depends on the previous value, actually, because if it's ascending, it should be descending and vice versa. So it should be something like this. So old order. Um, old order. If old of older is ascending, then I put descending. Else I put ascending. So in the first case, if it's none, it will go in ascending. That is the first one that we should consider because we, in the exercise, we say from the lowest to the highest, there's ascending. No, we don't. We don't. I mean, yes, that's could be another thing that we can do. No, also ending the none, but the mechanism is the same. We can also have ascending, descending, and other kind of ordering that we. Uh, so here we need to sort this to change the state. So this change will re render the table. But now we need to have the table, th these things here called somewhere else. Cannot be here. So we can write, for instance, here, if sort order is equal to ascending, then This one. Else, if sort order is descending, then we need to do the contrary. B score minus A score. And again, we are ignoring the known case in this case, right? So the first time that the components is rendered, this will be copied here. This will be none. So this will not do anything, no sorting, because it's none, it's not ascending or descending. And when we press the button, it will just put it it will just show the, the known order at least. When we press the button, since all the order will be none, it will put it in ascending. And when the change, the state change, it will also sort the table. Hmm? So let's see if it's working. See, minus 10, 0, 5, 10. If I press again, 10, 5, 0, minus 10. 
and also the answer changes. So no is 10 score, no continues to be 10 score, and everything else continues to work. And if I refresh, clearly I go back to the original version. Okay, so this is a way, a specific way that doesn't happen a lot of times to handle derived states. So something that is derived from a state, the array state, but is not uh, that changing that state because that is the state of the entire application and we don't want to. Hmm? So this is a way to handling a, a derived state in a variable. And this, again, is sort of a special case because we have sorting. For instance, if you have filtering, just removing things, that could be a filter passed through the table before as a props. So you pass the smaller table here. So this is sort of special case, but again, it may happen with lists or tables that you want to order them in some way. And, and for table, it's pretty normal that you have something that you want to to change and we can also since we have state change the, the button here if you want hmm? I can do it in, in the break just changing the icon if it's ascending show sorry sorry if it's descending show this if ascending show the one with the arrow in the other but it's again another ternary operator to say if the state is true then show this button otherwise show the other button nothing really complex okay and again everything else continue to work and notice what happens here, that if I add something, it is added ordered. Because this is zero and it is before five and after minus 10 in the order. Because it's a derived state. So you get from the original state, but still, derive it and put it in a variable within the function within the component okay so again this is sort of a special case for derived state so if you instead have filters i mentioned this but imagine you have a button here you have in the movies right your filters in the movies how do you handle those filters for instance Imagine to have here a button that say filters for score bigger than zero, bigger not equal to zero. So you press the button and you want to show in the table only five and 10, only the last two lines in whatever order. That is similar to the movies, right? You have your filter all, your filter for year, etc. So in that case, that filter will change the up state or not. No. No. And how do you handle it? A local variable in up and then in prop to this end. You don't a local variable for what? For storing what? No, you don't need a local variable for storing the content of the table. Uh, you will need, for sure, a state for the filters. You, it's, it's easier in that case, but it's an app. So here, for instance, instead of passing answers, that is the full state, you can pass answer.filter for whatever you want to filter. So you pass not the entire state, but just the filtered component so the, the local variable is in a way created uh, at runtime when you pass the props temporary created here so this is filter uh, whatever it is by score bigger than zero well you need to write a, a filter function clearly not not something like that but this is the idea you can filter that here so you pass to answers just a smaller a copy of the state in a props, but just the copy that you want. Hmm? Because in this case, the filter will be probably like be here, somewhere here, but they are outside the table because they are filters. So there will be buttons, tabs, it will be in a sidebar, but outside of the table. 
here are the critical things that this button is inside the table it's not outside so if it, it was outside it could be probably easier to just pass the sorted uh, array to the table but this is not outside is inside so you have this information within the component and the state coming down instead for instance a filter would be likely be outside of the table so you can handle it from a separate component and, and you can pass it for instance the filter in in this way so here you can put the filter function that you can select by choosing which filter you want to to do so this is for instance one way to solve a piece of the lab that you will probably have, I don't, I don't remember if this week or next week, but one of the two will be about this. Okay, so we can have a 20 minutes break now, and we will continue after the break with edit.